The first time I as a player had to cross a river in a D&D game, it wasn't as easy as I thought it would be. It was too fast to swim across, our party members with a lot of armor would have probably drowned trying to do so, and none of us could fly. But picture this, what if something was also trying to drown us? This week I'm going to tell you about Selkies and Kelpies, two water-based fey creatures slash monsters from Scotland. First, I wanna talk about the Selkies, which I used to think were basically Scottish mermaids, but not so. Selkies are shape changers. They are more specifically seals that can turn into human beings, mostly women, but men can be Selkies as well. There are limits to the shape change though, sort of like werewolves. Full moons or certain moon cycles might make a Selkie be able to transform back and forth, or certain nights like solstices or midsummer. And think of the transformation process from seal to human as more like a shedding of the seal skin. Because if a Selkie loses their seal skin, they can't transform back. This means that on occasion when human men have fallen in love with beautiful Selkie women or vice versa, that these men will sometimes take and hide a Selkie's seal skin to prevent a woman from transforming back into her true form. There's a few variations of this story, but one you see several times is just that a man and a selkie woman fall in love, he steals her skin, and he stuffs it up a chimney to keep it hidden. They marry and have children, and all the time the woman goes out to the sea and looks longingly, she wants to, she's a selkie, she's not supposed to be in human form her whole life. But the man doesn't want her to go either, and to be fair, in these stories, normally the selkie women do sincerely love these men that they marry, so it's a bit of a conundrum. However, when it comes to a selkie, the call of the sea will always win. Normally in these stories, one of their children ends up finding the seal skin when they're playing around and look in the chimney one day. They inevitably bring it to their mother, who is then able to transform back and go back to the sea. Selkie women are also supposed to have beautiful singing voices, which I feel is kind of a staple of beautiful fae creatures. And they can be like the women are in those stories, rather friendly and human-like, or they can be malicious, more like actual mermaids. Call those Seely Fae. I'll be here all night. Off the top of my head, I have two ideas for Selkies right now. One that I will talk about later in the video, but the first one that I want to discuss is having Selkie be a playable race. I mean, some people play changelings, some people play water ganasi. You could just give a selkie the stats of something in between. And maybe whether they're in human form or seal form, they have different abilities and strengths. Maybe a player has to be able to keep a seal form, like their skin with them, traveling with them, or maybe it was lost and their player backstory and their personal journey is trying to get it back. In that case, I think there would have to be some making up for any lost abilities from not having a seal skin, but I feel like this could really work and be kind of cool. But Selkies are beautiful seals turned women who can transform back and forth as long as they keep track of that skin. They are often in stories of romance where husbands try to prevent them from turning back, but inevitably they always go back to the sea. Kelpies, on the other hand, are horrible. Kelpies are aquatic spirits that often appear like horses, especially around rivers and streams, but their appearance kind of just depends on who they are trying to lure to the depths. When they're trying to drown children, they'll look like horses because children want to pet the horsies. When they want to lure men, they will of course look like beautiful women. And if they're just trying to lure in some casual passerbys, they might just look like a person, maybe one who needs help, maybe one who looks friendly and wants to chat, you never know. And most of the stories involving them have to do with trying to drown kiddos. Their backs are extremely sticky. In fact, all of them are extremely sticky, even if they don't look like it. So if a child is to hop onto one of their backs or reach out and touch one, they will get stuck to the horse that will then plunge into the depths and goodbye child. I just checked my notes and also Kelpies then eat their prey. So maybe not marriage material, but they have other stuff going for them. Selkies, not Selkies, Kelpies, oh no. But Kelpies have other things going for them. When their tails slap the water, it sends out a sound as loud as 
thunder. They can also summon floods. And if trapped by one, one of the best ways to get a hold of the situation is to get a hold of a Kelpie's bridle. Once you do, you can control it at that point. One story I found has to do with a group of 10 kids. I can't remember if they were all siblings or not, but nine of them get stuck on this horse and a 10th had reached out to touch its nose. Um, and so just its finger got stuck and the child was able to escape by removing that finger. I never know what I'm allowed to say without getting flagged. So this is another shape changing water fae or monster, depending on how you view selkies. They could both be monsters. Selkies have more limitations on how they can transform and they have in theory, their own water-based abilities, beautiful singing voices. I'm thinking maybe like charming abilities. I don't know. Kelpies on the other hand have access to, I guess some D&D spells like create and destroy water and thunderclap. And they are more monstrous and murderous and generally malevolent. So here's my other thought. You could have people be able to play selkies in D&D and so maybe this next idea would negate that possibility or maybe it would still be fine but i'm thinking about a place in the feywild or on the material plane that just has a lot of water and maybe some fey portals nearby but a place being affected by both selkies and kelpies do you see the chaos coming depending on their respective intelligence levels Maybe both Selkies and Kelpies in the region are disguising themselves as beautiful women. Maybe both are malicious, maybe just the Kelpies are and the Selkies are fine and being targeted because a group in town or beings nearby think that they're the ones drowning people. If it's in the Feywild, then maybe the creatures nearby know that both species live in the region and they want to hire the party to get rid of the Kelpies but spare the Selkies. It would be a challenge for parties to one, learn how to differentiate between the two and maybe a Selkie party member could help with that, and two, destroy an extremely dangerous monster in theory, more than one if they're affecting the region. On its home turf, trying to kill a Kelpie in the water or multiple Kelpies in the water, that's a challenge. Maybe they could get some Selkies on their side. Maybe some Selkies get in the way. If the people or beings or creatures in the area don't know that there's a difference between the Selkies and the Kelpies, they just think all beautiful women in the area are evil, drowning monsters, then maybe the party has to figure out that there's two different species at work here. One's malicious and one isn't. I imagine it would definitely be harder for a party to deal with the lack of knowledge, but I also think it could be really interesting to see how they problem solve that. I'm not sure, because I feel like there's so many different ways that you could handle something like this. You can also just have one or the other as independent monsters in different places. So I wanna know what you think. What Selkie or Kelpie lore do you know of that I didn't mention in this video? What would you want to do with them? And also, okay, more than anything else, what do you think of using them as a player character race? I think it's a cool idea. And if you are interested in the Fey Wild or Fey creatures or D&D in general and want to learn how to take different folklore or literature and bring them to D&D, then subscribe. I mean, you know the drill. Like, subscribe, have a great day, and I will see you next time.